Right. Okay. Right. So as you can see from the screen, um, my name is Sandra Josie. I'm happy for anyone to just call me Sandy. Plain, simple Sandy. Okay. I'm um, a trained um, motivational speaker. I'm also a lecturer for 23 years. I lecture up and down the West Midlands mainly, and um, anything from Coventry College, North East Worcester College, and um, Birmingham areas as well. I've done Walsall College as well, City College, Birmingham, and um, before they merged to South and City, okay? Um, before that, I was a um, curriculum coordinator for the beauty department, which means I was the manager for the beauty department in the, 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 um, the City College, Birmingham. But I decided one day that I couldn't really fulfill what I really wanted to do when it was disseminating my knowledge onto the students. Because when you're teaching, you're governed by a curriculum and you can't really go outside that scope. And when there's anything, when the students got any problems or they want to speak to you a bit more, because sometimes you have students that relate to you more, they've got more <laughs> rapport with you than they have with probably maybe the counselling team, yeah? But it's not in our jurisdiction to counsel the students when you're actually employed as a lecturer, right? So I decided that after about mm, 20 years, I gave it to the 20 year mark of lecturing, I decided I needed more, I wanted something else to do. Uh, and I was still passionate about training, and in particular passionate about training young women, young girls. Now I set up um, Teen Girls Networking, which only launched in May of this year, and I'm happy to say that last month we was awarded for um, community organisations. Um, so, you know, that was really, really good. You know, I was really, really pleased with that. And the whole aim for Teen Girls Networking, you have some flyers on the table, um, is basically to empower the girls and um, help them. The main factor is to turn them into entrepreneurs, what my word is sisterpreneurs, okay? We turn them into sisterpreneurs in that mindset, start thinking about being a sisterpreneur, okay? And also to train them, those who want to, to become um, authors, young authors, because we've all got a story to tell. Mm -hmm. And even if it's not about yourself, because I know a lot of people think, oh, write a book. I don't want to write about a book about me. Too much, too much baggage, too much, you know, oh, that's too much. Not going to go there. But you don't need to write a book about yourself. A book could be anything. I know um, a lady that wrote a book just about her hair, her hair being curly, you know? So you really can write a book about anything, but I will be able to teach you step by step from the page writing to going online, what apps to use to download and then get your book self-published on Amazon. Easy, it's so easy, right? Um, so I do things like that. Apart from that, we do things like black history, um, um, health and well-being. You know, and of course, my background is um, beauty therapy, hairdressing, and holistic therapy. So you get all of that as well, and so much more, so much more. We're going to be starting in January um, about business, right, and help them starting thinking about business of their own. Because what we want to do as well, right, is the main thing is is that I'm a self belief <laughs> management coach, which is basically what I do is I help you like believe in yourself. Right? There's so many people believe in other things, but then when it comes to themselves, they're lacking in belief. Yeah. So we need to turn that around because you've got to believe in yourself first. You've got to love yourself first. You've got to know your self-worth first before you can disseminate that onto anyone else. Does that make sense? Yes. Put up your hand if you think that makes sense. Yeah. That good. So you're with me. Right. So. That's basically what we do with Teen Girls Networking. On the flip side of that, I also do, I've started um, Club Lady Day Queens because I call my women queens, okay? Club Lady Day Queens have been set up actually in 2010. So I've been going for a good while now. And that's the reason why from that, a lot of the ladies were saying, oh, my daughter would really like these, but you know, I only cater for women. And that's when Teen Girls Networking was born. Okay. So that's just a little bit about me. I have two grown sons, 
I'm going to say grown, the oldest one is 33 years old, and the youngest one is 26. Okay, so that's kind of like giving away my age. So I'm standing here as a big woman, a middle aged woman, right? And that's like a young person. Uh, I, I suppose it probably gave that away anyway by saying I've been lecturing for 23 years and kind of I like had a rough idea that I'm not that young. Although I might look it. <laughs> okay, so um, self worth. What does self worth mean to you? Anybody? Anybody care to self worth? I think. Um don't get me tweeting because I won't stop. Uh, self worth to me is when you really believe in yourself and you won't let, you won't do something that will damage yourself. Yeah, yeah. Really. Exactly. In a nutshell, in a nutshell, you, you've got to feel worthy of yourself and don't belittle yourself, don't um, devalue yourself. That's another thing as well because then when people go into the workplace, Sometimes they feel that they've been working for a long time and they, they deserve that raise, but they're frightened to go and ask for that raise. And even talking big women, you know, some big women are really frightened to actually just go and say, well, hey, you know, these new people are coming in and they're starting on such and such salary because they know they've seen the advertisement when the job was going out. And they think, well, I'm on that and I've been here for like five years and I've never had a raise, you know, and sometimes people don't have that confidence to just go and ask for something like that but sometimes you've got to be assertive and you've got to just go for what you want and self-worth to me means going for what you want and doing what you want right and also learning to say no and learn to say no as well because sometimes you don't want to do something it's okay to say no it's okay to say no the, the thing with women we're so even even as young as we may be, we so um, want to please people, people pleasers. It's on our nature to be kind of like motherly, if you understand what I mean. And we very much so like to please people. And um, we very rarely want to say no to people because we just it's just in our nature to do that. You know, so it's okay to say no, especially when you've got so much things on and you're exhausted, you really need to learn to say no and have some me time. You need to know your time. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to try and get you guys to mingle a bit. Right, now who here has come on their own? Put your hands up. One person, two people. Right? So who, put your hands up, who's with who? Is anybody with somebody like their best friend or their sister or whatever? You three, what's together? Yeah, no, see. You're with somebody? Right, okay. Right, so now I'm gonna do I'm gonna upset or not. You know what I'm gonna do, don't you? I'm gonna switch you around, right? And what I want you to do is I want you to right, let's see what's in the questions. Talk to, talk to two people, just two people that you don't know, right? Talk to two people that you don't know for a few minutes and I want you to find out why they are here, right? One thing. And also find out an extraordinary or an unusual or maybe um, an unusual thing about them or maybe an achievement that they really felt on top of the world really good thing. So. Find out um, an extraordinary or unusual thing about them. Also, their greatest achievement and um, why they're here. And of course, obviously, you have a yeah, fine exchange names as well. All right? There's some notes past there if you can't remember. I'm going to give you a few minutes to find two people you don't know. All right? So get up, mingle, find somebody. Move to the next table. Don't be shy. Come on. Make sure you three. Wanna make sure you be a broken up. Come on. Two people at the back. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Find out the name. Find out why they are here. 
and I find that have you got a really massive achievement that you want to, you know, share? Well, Two people. Who's not found anybody? You can group up in three if it's not. Yeah, group up in three. Hi everyone, I'm here at the um, Virtuous Young Ladies and um, I'm just giving a brief presentation to the ladies here and as you can see they're just doing a little exercise at the moment. Right, so um, hopefully we'll come back with some good results. Okay, let's get these ladies rocking. Thank you for watching. Right, time to swap over. Find one more person. If you haven't done it already, can I give you two minutes to do that? What's the name? Why are they here? Find out great achievements from that person or something extraordinary about them. are we nearly done <laughs> when you're done if you take the seats uh, so i can see you <coughs> Take a seat when you're when you're done.
30 seconds, 29, 28. <laughs> okay, right, everybody come back to me. Now, question. All eyes front. Attention, please. You can tell I'm a teacher, any. <laughs> um, right. Hands off. Who found that exercise easy? One. Hands off. Who found that exercise a little bit out of their comfort zone? Yeah. One. Just one person. Everybody else is comfortable with that. Okay, so the reason why I ask that, the reason why I ask that is because sometimes, even when you're a grown woman, right, networking is something that we sometimes, you know, feel a bit uncomfortable about. Um, I've been to so many different networking um, things, you know, like the breakfast networking stuff, which are predominantly men for obvious reasons women are doing the school run, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, what I find as well is that you may also find the same things. That don't you find that sometimes when you're networking in a networking environment, you tend to go for somebody who's technically speaking like you? What I mean is sometimes you're networking, if you're networking in this room, what's full with men, yeah? And boys, you would automatically start looking for a female. Put your hands up if I'm right. Yeah? That's the first thing that you, uh, even myself, even myself, as confident as I am, first thing you go is you look for a female. You don't look to see, let me find this man, this middle aged man, this grey, this white, you know, different thing. You don't just look for someone and go straight to them, do you? You go for what you feel comfortable with. It's true, isn't it? Yeah? And the same thing with age groups as well. But I find age groups is that sometimes younger ones would probably go, oh, she looks about my age, we're going to sleep tomorrow. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, right? So we're so used to doing what is comfortable, right? Now what we need to learn to do is to step out of that box and do things that are not comfortable, you know? Because those are the things that actually helps you to progress and move on. Right? So the more you do things that are, say, not as comfortable, yeah, but it's not going to hurt you, but sometimes you just need to do those things. Does that make sense? Yeah. So um, the reason why I asked to do that exercise because I wanted you to touch and mingle and that. Because, again, with Teen Girls Networking, we try to get them from, like, people from different schools all over the rest of the whoever can get to our base, and have the training, right? I prefer that rather than going into schools and doing the same workshops into schools, even though I do go into schools, all right? Because the feedback you get from people coming from all walks of life and different areas is completely different to feedback you get when people know each other. Because they see each other at school every day, or five days a week, I should say, break times, lunch time, etc. etc. They're used to it. But when that out, steps outside that comfort zone, it's a completely different thing. And you find that they actually learn more. And I would encourage you to go to more events such as this. And I'm sure that John would do more in the future. I would encourage you to go to more events because then when you are and you will be the new girl in that workplace, everyone will start a new workplace right a new job somewhere especially when you've not started your work um you know your work journey yet okay um, and even when you're a big woman and you've got to find a job and go into a new place you're the new girl and that can be very daunting to some people 
right? So the more you get to learn to mingle with people that you don't otherwise mingle with, the easier it gets for you, right? And it builds up your confidence a lot more, okay? So another point on self-worth. Um, how many of you, I need a show of hands, how many of you um, look at yourself in a full-length mirror with just your underwears on and really examine yourself? How, but, yeah, one, two, three, four. Right. <laughs> oh, I'd like to see the hands coming up, that's really good. When was the, when was the last time? Does anybody tell me, when was the last time? This morning? What? This morning? This morning? Yeah, this morning? This table? This morning? Yeah? Just the underwear. Okay, now, the reason why I say that is because, again, sometimes people don't look at themselves. And if you, the, those of you who do it regularly, you might find it quite surprising, but sometimes people just don't look at themselves because they just don't, you know, they don't feel comfortable with that. And if you don't feel comfortable with yourself, how are you going to love yourself? You've got to strip it all down, stand up in front of the mirror, look at all the lumps and bumps. Doesn't matter if you've got the cellulite, it doesn't matter if you've got the stretch marks, it doesn't matter if you've got the bruises or whatever, right? It's all part of you. All those scars are all part of you, you know? But every scar tells a story. Now I could, I could point to the scars on my body and say, well, I got this while I was climbing the tree when I was three years old or something. Do you know what I mean? And when you think about it, you actually start reminiscing that time, you know? And you might even laugh about it. Some scars are things that is probably, um, you know, hurtful, you know? You might have some scars that are hurtful scars and you reminisce on that and it's not a nice feeling. But then you've got some scars that will be things that just happen when you're a child, for instance, yeah? But you need to be able to look at yourself, look at all the lumps and bumps and the scars and the stretch marks and cellulites and blah, 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 blah. That I'm talking from experience here, right? So you now know what I've got on my body, right? But you've got to look at them and think, you know what? Them stretch marks was, I've got two sons, you know? I'm proud of those stretch marks. They're there for a reason. Yeah? So you've got to be thinking about yourself in that way and you've got to love yourself in that way. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is